Uh, Mr. Zabisco, if you can explain why our particular television program helps you relax after a stressful day, and which which program that might be, uh, please let us know whenever you're ready, good sir. Well, you know what? Everything I watch on television is DVR'd. So I can sit in the recliner or the couch, watch it, and then when a commercial starts, I can fast forward through it and then get back to the show so it's not interrupted. And lately, and this goes back to even being the pro wrestler, because professional wrestling was the good guy versus the bad guy, good and evil. And I've got into this show, I've been watching it for a little over a year or so now, I can't believe how many episodes they made in the room. Great. But it was, again, a show about good beating evil. And it was called Perry Mason. And I fell in love watching this show because there were so many episodes. The writing was amazing, the story. And it was like a, a game, too, because you're trying to figure out who the murderer is. You know, like murder mystery because you try to figure out who the murderer is throughout the show. It's like a puzzle. But it was very well done. So I've been hooked on Perry Mason for over a year, and I still didn't see them all. They must have made them for over God, 10 years. I'm amazed how many they made. And even the old movies are like Charlie Chan and Sherlock Holmes with Basil Rathbone. But it all had to do with good beating evil. But Perry Mason's the show I'm hooked on now. And I love it. Well, Larry Zabisco talking about Raymond Burr. Guys, again, Raymond Burr played that role. We talked about this in the green room of this show, The Green Room. And uh, we were talking about, we were marveling at the longevity of this show. And amazing. how at the end of the day, Larry, uh, it all came together. Even, even at the 15-minute mark, we thought it wouldn't. And the writing, the great writing behind the show really kind of catapulted it. I think. Yeah, they had great writers. The stories were great. I mean, there's the puzzles trying to figure out who the murderer was. And and then just watching the old shows, I'd see a car. Hey, there's a 1957 Chevy. I remember seeing that when I was a kid. <laughs> and every every room people were in, everybody was having a cigarette. Right. It's not like the world today. <laughs> God, and I got to ask you this, too. We're going to kick it over to Zab Judah, guys, because, again, Right after these these luminaries and legends are giving us their points regarding these topics, talk about some of the stuff you guys did, Larry. You know, I brought this up again with the without the advent of pay per view, what you guys did, you were an innovator, man. Everything you did was used as a template. I mean, even the stuff with Killer Tim Brooks, you know, it sounds familiar with the whole buying of the title and everything. I mean, you were an innovator, my friend. Yeah, I mean, I. I, I... I was blessed. I was blessed and I was taught by some of the classics of like Bruno and Strongbow and Gorilla Monsoon. And I, I listened and learned and uh, I didn't have any really obstacles, but I had accomplishment because I listened and learned from the, the classics. And you had to survive in those days yeah. because it wasn't like the WWE today is a great company and you get contracts. If you get hurt, they pay your surgeon bill. You sit home for four or five months recouping. They're paying you every month. Back in my day, if you got hurt, you're out of a job. No one paid you anything. No one paid you. So you it was to work, work hurt all the time. It was a different, you know, yeah. it was a different kind of thing. But again, pro wrestling was a good versus evil. And that, you know, that, that, that feeling in me for justice. And why can't everybody just love it, the human race together? Why are we having wars? Why do we right. got medical people making bioweapons? What the hell are you killing? You're right. Somebody with your SUV running over a Christmas parade. What the hell are you thinking? Well, you know what, Larry? It's because they weren't watching Perry Mason. They should have. They should have unwound. Right. They should have listened to this topic. Our great leaders, right? I don't want to get on a soapbox, but our well, great see, leaders maybe should have done that. Uh, Larry, it's for the same reason why a lot of times we didn't trust our government. As soon as we started realizing things were happening <laughs> under our nose. We don't trust them now. Well, the very first thing LBJ did when he picked up the phone one day uh, during the Vietnam War was he told Uncle Walty, hey, man, you're killing me out there. I thought there's such a thing as an investigative journalism and journalism, journalistic integrity. But you know what? Now we know. Now we know what's happening. And regardless of uh, your view on politics, it's good that we can come together. And in this living room style yeah. conversation, talk about things that do matter. And maybe, perhaps, maybe we can forget why we hate one another for about 60 or 90 minutes. That's yeah, the goal. there should be no reason. All the reasons people hate each other are made up. It's a That's deceit. It. It's artificial. Artificial it's hate. Totally agree with you. Uh, guys and gals, Mr. Zab Judah again. Larry, 
legend, the living legend, Mr. Zabisco, and Matt Dr. Fink, a man who revolutionized the music, are here with us. Thank you so much, guys and gals and pals, for enjoying this video and watching it. If you love the content, if you're enjoying it, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, and make sure that you know that we know that the new network is on the rise. Thank you for being who you are.